So here we are in Mostar after a four hour bus journey. So here's a beautiful place uh, for those point where I will start the basic introduction to the city of Mostar. So over here on the ground you can see a shape of a building that was the shape of the first basilica that was found here in the city of Mostar. Roughly from the 6th to the 9th century old. That means that the first signs of settlement of Catholics here in this region of the Balkans we are now in Herzegovina. The name of the country is Bosnia and Herzegovina. If you ever wondered how the country got its name, the origin comes from the Bosnia part, comes from a uh, river named Bosna that flows to the northern part of the country. And Herzegovina, the south, where Mostar is also its largest city, comes from the word uh, uh, Herzeg. Herzeg is a title for a duke. Herzegovina means duke's land. This region of the Balkans during the 15th century was ruled by a duke named Herceg Stepan Kosacha. In the 15th century, the Ottomans, the Turks, conquered the Balkans from the east. They first conquered the northern part of the country, that Bosnia part, and 13 years later, the southern part as well. So the name kind of stuck when those Ottomans uh, conquered it. They said that we finally conquered that uh, Duke's land as well, that Herzegovina part. So that is the interesting point how the country got its name. So I mentioned that Mostar is now its largest city in the southern region, in this Herzegovina region. But that was not always the case. You see, before those Ottomans, Turks came here, Mostar was only a small village, a small settlement on that river Nereta. You will see that large river that flows throughout the whole town here in Mostar. Before they came, there was only two towers and a small wooden hanging bridge on chains. But the Ottomans came here, they saw the potential of this area. See, this whole city is like in a valley, only roughly 63 meters above the sea level, but surrounded by these mountains and hills. He saw the potential, the Sultan Suleiman at that time, the great, he saw the potential that if he built a stone bridge here on that Neretva river, that he could expand his empire even more. So he tasked one architect named Nimar Hayrudin to build him a stone bridge that would last for 100 years here in this region. Eventually that bridge was built in the middle of the 16th century and that bridge is now known as the Stari Most, the old bridge of Mostar. For its time, it was considered a marvel of architecture. Never before in that Ottoman Empire was uh, built a larger one hour bridge or after that. Uh, that's why it's also part of the UNESCO uh, protected worldwide heritage and why Mostar, the old town of Mostar, is also uh, famous for. But of course, throughout the history of the city, it's not just that old town, that Ottoman period that we will see throughout the whole town. After the Ottomans, this country, this region, was first part of the Austrian-Hungarian Empire rule period, the late 19th century. In the 20th century, we also had Kingdom of Yugoslavia, later the Socialist Republic of Yugoslavia, and now since 92, also the independent country of Bosnia and Herzegovina. So throughout its history, it went under many influences, many cultures, the city of Mostar is also considered to be the most diverse, most multi-ethnic city in the country of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Over here we are in front of a Catholic Franciscan church. In the old town you will see and visit also one of the oldest uh, mosques from the Muslim community in the city of Mostar. You will also see the place where the new Jew Jewish synagogue will be built. Also we will see on a hill uh, the Orthodox church, the South Orthodox church right here in Mostar. So it's really uh, uh, a small city, around 100,000 people, but very rich in its history. Uh, I will try throughout the tour to make, uh, like, find places like here. There's enough room for me where I will explain the most important parts of the tour. Before we go into the old town, in roughly 100 meters in front of us, we'll have to cross one street. The green light there is a little bit shorter. I usually like to gather my group in front of there. We all cross and run go, and then we are almost at the old town. Wherever you see later in Abelstone Street, that means that you are in the old town of Mostar. Of course, that is the tourist place here in the city. There they also accept euros or dollars if you have, so you don't have to exchange. But if needed, I will show you places where there are exchange offices as well. We usually uh, we use the currency of the convertible mark, the Bosnian mark here in the country. And the exchange rate is very simple to remember. One euro is roughly two Bosnian marks. So that is, if you see prices in Bosnian marks, like roughly the exchange rate. So if you're interested, to maybe have a coffee later or bring a souvenir back from the city. Also, the streets in the old town can be crowded. 
a lot of people and they are very narrow, I would suggest that if you have anything that is important or valuable to yourself, they put it somewhere in front of you, just in case so you always have eyesight on your belongings. So, if everyone is ready, we can already make our way into the old town of Mosta. Warm. So I already mentioned that this bell tower can be a perfect orientation point in this city. That is also the highest bell tower in the whole country of Bosnia and Herzegovina, 107 meters tall. Originally this church over here was built in the year 1860. Uh, uh, but the So you can see from here that large white building on the hill over there on your left side that is the Saborna Tsrkva, originally built in the year 1863 that was still under the Ottoman rule here in the Balkans. Even the Sultan at that time, Abdul Aziz, donated 100,000 coins of those uh, uh, currency at that time for the construction of that church. And it was, uh, when it was built, also the largest Orthodox church in the whole country of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Unfortunately, you can still see on the right side before we go into the old town. The old town starts right over there at the end of that street where you see those flagpoles. It's the start of that cobblestone street. So there are still some buildings here that are ruins in the city of Mostar. Those are all remains from that last war that we had in the 90s here in the last century. Fortunately, these buildings are not yet reconstructed. Some of them is the reason is the lack of funding for the project. Some of them have historic value. For example, that building you will see over there above the entrance door. It was built in the year 1895. So during the Austro-Hungarian Empire rule period, those buildings have to be reconstructed, rebuilt and look the same way like before the war. And those are very costly projects. But the old town of Mostar that we're going to visit was re uh, reopened and renovated in 2004. And since 2005, it's also part of the UNESCO protected worldwide heritage.
I'm printing that. to the old town. Soon when we enter the old town, in front of us you will see two large stone towers. Those are already the towers of the old bridge here in Mostar. Of course, we're gonna visit the old bridge here in the old town. But just as a sign to remember later, after your free time, the way back is just a straight line, a straight road from that old bridge to that Franciscan church. And it usually takes around 10 to 15 minutes that you should take that time in consideration for your way back to that uh, parking lot. Uh, on our way throughout the tour, I will make some small detours because I want to show you the uh, other interesting places of the old town here in the city of Mostar. You will also see that there are lots of restaurants, cafes and souvenir shops here in the old town. A lot of these restaurants, if you need recommendations later, I'm also feel feel free to ask, I can help you out with that. Uh, serve traditional Bosnian food. What is a traditional Bosnian dish? You see, our cuisine is very similar to the Turkish one. We like to eat uh, 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 those uh, kind of meat-heavy dishes. We have those chevapi or chevapcici that are very popular. But what is also considered a traditional dish is, for example, a sarma, a dolma, or a sogan dolma. Those are very that are stuffed with rice and meat. For example, the dolma is a pepper that is stuffed with rice and meat, and sogan dolma is onion, an onion that is stuffed with rice and meat. Those are examples of those traditional dishes. Of course, in the old town, they will also serve you if you want to try out Bosnian coffee, which is very similar to the Turkish coffee. Very uh, a strong type of coffee that is good over here with that grinded coffee, freshly grinded coffee, and this. The south here, Herzegovina, is also famous for its wine sorts. We have two types of wine that are locally made here. Those are the Žilavka and the Blatina. The Žilavka is a white wine and the Blatina is a red wine. Both of those wine sorts are dry wine sorts and can be tried out in the old town as well. Of course, you will also notice that there is lo uh, lots of these souvenir shops. If you want an authentic, a traditional souvenir from the city of Mostar, I would always suggest something that is made out of leather or made out of copper. You will see in the old town, the place where the former leather tannery was, the city of Mostar in those Turkish Ottoman times was famous for its leathers, uh, leather tannery and its copper smiths. The leather tannery was on this side of the river of the Meretva and the copper smiths were on the other side. If you are fortunate enough, sometimes when you go through the, 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 that copper smith street here in Mostar, you can hear with your uh, ears and see with your eyes those copper smiths. If you hear like a small ticking noise, those copper smiths which still work here, a tradition that is over 400 years in the city of Mostar. They make those copper jewelry, copper plates and dishes. That is something that is authentic and also handmade still here in the city of Mostar. So now my guest, let's make our way to the old town. Thank you. 
So my guests, as I mentioned before, in front of us, those two large stone towers, those are the towers of the old beach that we're going to be today. Here in the old town, over here on the top right picture, you can see an example of those cevapi or cevapcici, those small meat rolls, meat sausages, that are served with chopped onion as a side dish in a very thin cut bread called somo. The smaller mosques of the local communities, like for example the leather tenor, uh, uh, the so-called mahalas, which are like blocks or streets of the city, they would use the material that they found locally. Here in the southern region of uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina, in Herzegovina, the main building block of the old town was a limestone called Tenelia that was found roughly five kilometers south of the city of Mostar. And that limestone was even used for the construction of the old bridge. But before the old bridge was built, there was another building that was built here in the old town, and that was this small bridge you can see over here on the right side. That is the so-called Kriva Chupria, the Krug Bridge of the old town. Like I said, very specific about it is that it was actually older than the old bridge. It is both this one and the uh, large old bridge of Mostar are one arc stone bridges. So those Turkish Ottoman architects, they first tried to see if they could use that limestone for a construction of a one arc stone bridge. When this one was completed in the year 1558, they started the construction of the old bridge here in Mostar. And that one was only finished in the year 1566, so it took over eight years of construction for that old bridge here in the city of Mostar during those Turkish Ottoman times before it was completed. That, uh, that is the reason why it was considered also a marvel of architecture for its time. Uh, never before or after they built a larger one arc stone bridge. It's 29 meters long, 4 meters wide and up to 23 meters over the Neretva river here in the old town. But before we go to that old bridge, roughly in around 20 meters we'll make a small detour on the left side. There I want to show you the part of the old town that was mainly used during the daily lives here in the city of Yeah, I want to do it, of 
So first uh, I want to tell you is that you've chosen the perfect time to visit the city of Mostar. This is the best time of the year. To, uh, it's not too crowded and it's not too hot. Usually in the summer we can get up to 44 degrees here in the city Celsius. So it gets really hot and it's really crowded here in the old town. Like you've chosen the perfect time to visit uh, the city of Mostar. You're very, very fortunate. So now we're in the part of the old town that was mainly used during the daily lives in those Turkish Ottoman times. There are three major buildings here in this part of the old town that were really uh, mainly used in those times. The first one you will see over here on your right side, it says Taphana over that entrance door. That uh, Taphana is the word for the leather tannery. Now that complex you will see if you go later inside, uh, there are lots of restaurants and cafes that have a very nice view of the old town here in Mostar. But you will see if you go over there, in the middle of that complex, there is like a large pool. It looks like a swimming pool here in the old town. But that pool was not used for swimming during those Turkish times. It was used for coloring the leather. That was, as I said, the leather tin. And it was a fairly large one for its time. It had up to 60 workers at that time that worked in those small workshops here in the old town of Mostar. And those workers had a very specific building here in the city, this part of the old town named after them. And that is this small mosque which is right behind you. This is the uh, Haji Kurtova or more commonly known as the Tabachitsa Mosque. Tabachitsa means mosque with the leather tannery workers. And it's a very specific building here in the old town. First of all, it's the smallest mosque in the city of Mostar. And it was also built in that Bosnian style of architecture that has that stone roof up instead of those Ottoman domes that were specific for its time. But it also misses some parts that a traditional mosque would have. See, it doesn't have a, a fountain in its yard. Usually every mosque would have a small fountain, a so-called shadrman in its yard. The Shadrman is used for the abdes, the ritual bathing which you have to perform before you go inside the mosque for your daily prayers. You go five times a day for the daily prayers, so you have to take that abdes. And it also didn't have uh, a graveyard. Usually mosques would have, excuse me, would always have a small graveyard next to the mosque that was reserved for the imams and the muyetsis, like the priests that worked in that mosque during their lifetime. When they passed away, they would be buried next to the mosque where they worked. But this one was mainly used only by those workers of the leather tannery, that's why it didn't have that graveyard. There was a simple reason behind that. You see, those workers of the leather tannery, they didn't want to mix with other commoners in those Middle Ages in the city of Mostar, because working in a leather tannery would usually mean that you would have a very strong bodily odor because of the chemicals and stuff that was used for tanning the leather at that time. So they only used this mosque here in the old town. And the third building here uh, in the old town, which is the first one that we saw over here, says Hama Museum. That was of course the Hama, the Turkish bath, the Turkish sauna here in the city of Mostar during those Turkish Ottoman times. And those workers from the leather tannery in their breaks and uh, in after the shifts, when it was time for the daily prayers, they would go from the leather tannery to the hammam to perform their abdes over there before they went into the mosque for their daily prayers. So now my guests we're moving back on that main road and we're going over the old bridge here in Mostar. The old bridge is of course the most popular place here in the old town. It's very narrow uh, when it's too many tourists on the bridge. So there's not a lot of space for me for to explain everything about the history on the bridge on the bridge itself on the main part. But once we cross over the old bridge, usually on the left side of it there's like a small plateau where there's enough room for me where I will dare explain everything 
everything about the history of the bridge. The best way to crossing over the old bridge, you will see like there are like stairs on the bridge itself, is to walk in between those stairs and if needed, or hold on to the fences. If you see young men in swimsuits and no t-shirts on the bridge, that is also nothing unusual. Here in the city of Mostar, we have a tradition where young men jump from that bridge. That sounds insane, but that is something that is still done here in the city of Mostar. We have a competition here every year on the last weekend of July, where young men come from all parts of Bosnia and Herzegovina to the old town of Mostar, and then they jump from that bridge. They always jump in two styles, two categories. One is a dive on the feet, and the other one is a dive on the chest, so-called Master Skalasta, meaning like the bird swallow. They spread their hands while they're in the air before they dive with their hands and chest first from that bridge into that water. And uh, that is very, very dangerous jump. They also jump for tourists here during the tourist season. They collect some tips from visitors here in the city. When they collect enough, they will also jump from that old bridge. You'll probably in your free time at least see one of, or two of those dives here from the old bridge here in Mostar as well. So, <laughs> it's even possible if you're brave enough as a tourist to jump from that old bridge, but you'd have to take a training course with the locals over here. You will see a, a jumping platform next to the old bridge where you, if they see that you, after the practice, have the right technique and you are brave enough, they would let you jump from that old bridge, but you also have to sign an agreement that you won't sue the city if something happens. I don't see it as an insult for myself. Yeah. Yeah. Just to say, from Mostar, have you ever jumped from that old bridge? Well, the first time in my life when I went over that bridge and I uh, looked down, I said I would never jump from that bridge. So it is not considered uh, to be mandatory. But once you jump from that bridge, though, you become a lifetime member of the Divers Club. Also, my guests, if you're later interested to visit the beach in front of the old bridge, which you will see when we are on the old bridge uh, here in Mostar, to go down there, you go down this alley over here on my left side and then down these stairs on the left. But please keep in mind those stairs are very narrow and very steep on some parts, so it's not recommended to go down there in large groups. But the most the best photos and the most popular place is actually on the other side of the old bridge that we will visit here in the old town as well. There is a spot where you can see the main arc of the bridge with its two towers all fit in one frame. It's very important because the old bridge is not just that main arc but also these two towers that have a very important role in the history of this bridge here in Mostar. I will explain everything about that once we cross over the main arc and are on that platform on the other side. I'll explain everything about the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> like a highway. So as I mentioned before, my guests, wherever you see these stairs, that means you are on the old bridge here in Mostar. The best way of a crossing over the bridge is to walk in between these stairs like this. And we will move on the other side, on the left side, Please take your time, we're not in a hurry. I 
have to hurry just slowly over the whole bridge. You want to be in it, but don't put me in it. <laughs> So this is the famous bridge in Mostar. Um, I'll let the guide explain everything because I haven't got a clue. Mimar Hayrudin was not a famous architect at that time, but he was the fa uh, disciple of the famous Turkish architect Mimar Sinan, and he was tasked by the Sultan Suleiman in the uh, year 1558 uh, to build him a bridge uh, that would last here for over 100 years. The main arc of the old bridge here in Mostar stood here for over 430 years. Unfortunately, during the last war here in Bosnia and Herzegovina on the 9th of November 1993, the middle part of the bridge was bombed and shelled from those mountains over there on the right side. 
and it collapsed into the river of the Neres. But after the war, they fished out those blocks of the bridge, tried to reuse it for its reconstruction. The part that they couldn't reuse are those large boulders that you might have seen on the beach over there in front of the old bridge. They were placed there as a sign of remembrance of that first art here in the old town of Mostar. Later, they used the same type of stone, same uh, technology and same plans for its reconstruction. It was rebuilt uh, in 2004 and put back on that UNESCO protected uh, heritage list in 2005. So now my guess, we're going through this street over here on the left side, that is that Coppersmith Street, and we're going to visit that mosque over there that you see from here. That is that Koski Mehmet Pasha Mosque, mosque that was built in the 17th century here in the city of Mostar, and it also has the nicest view of the old town here in Mostar. Over 100,000 people. That was like 
or if you double the, the population of the city. On that day, also in the city of Mostar was Prince Charles, now soon to be King Charles. He was an ambassador of the UNESCO here in Mostar. And over here in this spot, you can see a picture of himself here in the city of Mostar, where you can see that main arc of the bridge and those two towers here. In the old town, all fit in one frame. But the best spot is actually once we visit the terrace in front of that mosque over there, here in the old town of Mosque. So my guess, this is for example something what those coppersmiths make here in Mostar. For example, a set for drinking that coffee. These are so-called jesla, where you put in the grinded coffee. And these are the field drums where you drink the coffee from. Here in uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina, we also use a shecheluk, the place where you put in the sugar cubes. Because our way of drinking Bosnian coffee is different than a, a Turkish style or a Turkish coffee. The Turks also put the sugar inside of the, when it's brewed. We put the sugar later in these cup, um, uh, the sugar cubes later uh, in these cups, and then drink it. That is like the Bosnian way of drinking uh, Bosnian coffee. And what you can see over here, for example, the motifs, all that sound that those coppersmiths make, they break into these, uh, they hammer down these motifs into these copper plates. For example, the most popular motif is, of course, the whole thing. And that is something that is traditional, that is a uh, souvenir here from the city of Moscow. Something like this is also what I prefer myself. You can actually use this at a home, make coffee if you want a strong type of coffee, and it's not just collecting dust somewhere. So if you want a, like a coffee drink, then it's something perfect from the city of Moscow. So my guests, we're now going to that mosque over there. I'm holding my hand in the air, so please follow me over here. You're following his hand held up in the in the air. So if you wonder why there is a Turkish flag, the Turkish consulate here in the city of Mostar is here in the old town of Mostar. So we are almost there. The entrance is right over here on the left side. We have to hurry up a little bit because at 1 p.m. it's the prayer time here in the old town of Mostar. And then this uh, Hi. Those two Lavanda. Lavanda. Evet. 
to take pictures. You put it in my pocket. You may have to wrap your shoulders up. It holds the camera straight, so wherever you, you it makes it smooth look. Yeah. Uh, DJI. It's a Japanese make, oh, a Chinese sure. look. <laughs> inside a mosque, a Muslim mosque.
is, as I mentioned before, the one that was really that was really charging the battle of art. As that the art channel was really one of the really things which we saw in the movie from the day. Probably saw it in the yard on the day as well. In the main movie, you have the fact that it is. That is a Shadowman. And the only thing that at the time is also the rain of the movie map here in the hometown of Wolfsburg. So, my guests, do you have any questions for inside of the mall? Not if you go down to the terrace of the Kyoto and have a perfect look at the massive view of the whole town of Mostar, also the best of the Kyoto Yes. 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 You go through the different types of surahs, which are like prayers, and these uh, prayers will always have uh, either 33 beats, 13 beats, or 99 beats. So you go once through these beats for every, uh, always citing the name of the God that is uh, God that is coming as well. That is how that is considered a good deed after a prayer. So if you have more time to uh, like a good, a good deed is to do these prayers. Yes. So, I guess when I show this is the terrace in front of the mosque. I'll get you that way. Later also, just one more time for you guys to remember the easiest way to go back to that to Franciscan church. You go over the old bridge and you can see the bell tower also from here. It's about like 10 to 15 minutes from the old bridge. Oh, Picture is both that in the background. Thank you. If you have any questions, feel free to ask uh, while I'm still here with you guys. Uh, uh, if you need anything, any recommendation or anything, feel free to ask. I'll be here for a couple of Thank you. 
Enjoy your life. 